Hi, today I will be talking about a very interesting power law which is often found in the circulatory and the respiratory system of animals. So, and this is the famous Murray's law. So, uh, what happens in the circulatory system is that we have a vein which bifurcates into daughter veins which further bifurcates into smaller veins and capillaries and so on and so forth. A question you can ask is, what is the relationship between the radius of the parent vein to the two daughter veins? So the blood is flowing like so. And you ask, what is the relationship between R1, R2 and R3? It turns out that the relationship is R1 cubed equals R2 cubed plus R3 cubed. This is the famous Murray's law. So this was for the circulatory system. If you do the same analysis for respiratory system, so you have a bronchi in the lungs which bifurcates into bronchioles, which further bifurcates into smaller bronchioles, so in this case, air is going like so. And you again ask the same question. What is the relationship between R1, R2, and R3? You get the same relation. So in this video, I will talk about why we see this relation. Why do we see this power law? But before I talk about the derivation, let me tell you some other power laws which we find in nature. You can ask, is this a similar power law in nervous system? because we, in the nervous system, uh, we have the neurons in which say this is the cell body and this is the axon. So the input to the neurons come from these dendrites and the output is from the axon. Uh, now you see that there is this bifurcation also in the dendrites and you can ask what is the relationship between, uh, between uh, between uh, the bifurcations of these dendrites and it turns out here the relationship is slightly different you don't see a third power as you see in Murray's law uh, it's also you can also think of it as a third power law you see a, a, a one half power you see a one half power uh, in the exponent This, by the way, is called Rawls' law after Wilfred uh, Rawls, who worked on dendrites. And I, and I think he has just recently died, or maybe he's still alive. Um, so, the the uh, another place where you see um, um, uh, see um, this power law is is what's called Leonardo da Vinci's rule or Leonardo da Vinci's law, which deals with the bifurcation patterns in trees. So you have a branch of a tree which bifurcates into smaller branches and so on and so forth. Now you can ask what's the relationship between the radius of the branches? And it turns out to be R1 squared is equal to R2 squared plus R3 squared. So you don't have the exponent 3 here, you have an exponent of 2. You, we see a similar exponent in the bifurcation of rivers into tributaries. The river is flowing like this and it bifurcates into, uh, into smaller tributaries. Then you again see uh, Da Vinci's law, which was discovered by Leonardo Da Vinci 500 years back. So here the exponent is 2, here the exponent is half, here the exponent is 3. In this video, I want to explain why do we see an exponent of 3 in the circulatory system and the respiratory system. You can talk about the other power laws in some other video. So the basic idea of uh, uh, Murray's law is that um, you want to minimize the power it takes to maintain the flow 
uh, in in the vein or the bronchi as the case may be minimize uh, energy consumption so minimize energy energy cons consumption can be written as the as the minimizing the power which is energy consumed per unit time so the total power consumed total power consumed is is due to two it comes from two parts uh, when uh, when a fluid is flowing in a pipe which could be a vein or a bronchi as the case may be then it takes certain energy to keep to transport the fluid so there's a transport energy due to transport of power required for transport plus there's an energy required to keep the cells alive in the fluid and also on the surface of the fluid so on the surface of the pipe so that is p upkeep so we want to minimize the, that power requirement um, so how do we calculate p transport so yeah let's start with the p transport so when a fluid is flowing in a pipe uh, which has a which has a length L and there's a pressure difference of delta P then under laminar flow uh, for Newtonian fluids we have a formula that flow rate is pi by 8 r to the power 4 delta P by L eta here eta is the viscosity the dynamic viscosity of the fluid Q is the flow rate which is measured in volume per unit time this is the uh, dif pressure difference between one end compared to the other end and l is the length of the pipe an interesting fact about this is that the exponent is four Us usually you expect that the flow rate should be proportional to the area of the pipe but that's not what you see in poise flow uh, this is poise flow you see uh, a quadratic dependence on the cross-sectional area of the pipe so what is p transport well, to calculate the power required to transport we go back to the simple equation which um, which defines power which is the amount of work done per unit time which is work is force times displacement and um, here uh, force can be written as delta p um, actually because the force is constant i can take it outside and i get dx by dt uh, force can be written as uh, as delta p the difference in pressure times area because remember pressure is defined as force per unit area so i'm taking it to the other side and so the change in pressure times area that's the total force times dt now delta p the a can be taken into the derivative and uh, we get and uh, this is nothing but the flow rate so we have delta p times q is the power required to transport the fluid J just so you understand why de uh, del ddt of ax is the flow rate you know the flow rate is defined as the volume of water transported of the fluid transported um, so v is a times x and uh, that's exactly what we see uh, yeah, in the expression here so uh, so we have this expression for p, uh, p transport let me get rid of delta p and write everything in terms of q so i use poise poise law to eliminate delta p and so I get uh, P transport is 8 over pi eta L Q squared divided by R to the power 4. This is P transport. Now P upkeep is the amount of energy required to keep the fluid alive. 
So that would be proportional to the volume of the pipe by r squared L times some constant lambda. So that's the other term. So that's it. That's that's the that's the expression we have. And let's substitute everything in into the equation uh, for total power and let's see what we have. Um, so we get 8 pi pi eta L q squared over r to the power 4 plus lambda pi r squared L as the total power required. Now to minimize the power with respect to the radius, we do dp by dr and equate it to 0. And I won't do the math here, but if you take the derivative, uh, you get r equals, sorry, q equals, um, q equals pi by 4 square root of lambda over eta times r cubed. By the way, this derivation is given in Wikipedia, so if you have trouble following any of the steps, then you can look it up there. So this is the, the flow rate. And now you can look at this equation in two ways. One way is to say that if you have a given flow rate, then the radius should be given, uh, should be given by this expression to minimize the, to minimize the, the uh, energy consumption. Another way to look at it is if you, have a, if you have a fluid flowing in a pipe, which bifurcates into smaller pipes, and there's a flow Q1 coming in, Q2 and Q3 going out. Then by mass conservation, you have Q1 is equal to Q2 plus Q3. And substituting this expression into that, into here, we get some constant, which is this. I, I'm calling it C times R1 cubed is equal to C times R2 cubed plus C times R3 cubed. Canceling out the C's, we get Murray's law. So Murray's law is saying if you have this ex uh, this relationship in uh, in the radii, then the amount of energy consumed to transport fluid across uh, this bifurcating system of pipes uh, or veins or artery or, or uh, bronchi would be minimized, and it, it is a testament to evolution that we have reached, uh, that it has reached this scaling, uh, this power law in natural uh, systems. And it's, so it has reached the most efficient configuration that is possible. Okay, that's all I want to say in this video. Uh, thank you for listening. See you next time. Bye.